Okay, now off to the phone now. Can you still hear us? Let me. I can. I don't know. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah? That's yeah. fine. Okay. Okay, so um, I think I will do two things. So, first, I will explain the, uh, the current code in the uh, review branch so that you can have a better idea of um, how different files in the extension work together. Um, how can I see? Top right corner, the first side. Uh, yeah. Okay. And I think uh, I just push on the latest code, so you can you can actually pull it and and, and have a look together as well. So yeah. So the latest code is in the rebuild branch, which is different from your separate branches. So you need to change your branch first in Git. Or you can go go to the web version and have yeah, it there. Yeah. Yeah. So should I wait or I can continue and you if you can create a screen then I don't think you need to do that. Um, so. and you can close this one. Hey, that's maximizing. Close. Yeah. Uh, come on. <laughs> No, no, it's not treatable even for me. Okay, so this is the manifest file. So the like uh, declaration file, when you have basic information about the name of the uh, extension and some other information. Um, I think the most important, the first one is the background file. The background file is um, what will happen when you click on um, the Chrome, the, the extension button, the M letter button. Yeah, and also, please interrupt and ask questions whenever, or tell us if they too fast or not very clear. Yeah, don't wait yeah. till then. So there's a background find, and under content script. So do you know what content script means? I think they all had a look of the Chrome develop the okay. extension tutorial, so they have basic idea. So content script basically just what is running on the normal page that you opened. And at the end, yeah, I've got a test file. So now I will jump into the background file. Um, so background HTML, it has nothing beside that background.js file. So um, at the beginning, you can see here, so it has an um, event handler for on-click of the browser action, which means that when you click on the M button of the extension, it will execute this code. And what it does is basically create a new window for the history map. So when you click on the M button, it will create a new, it will pop up a new window and the URL is here is history map page. So when you click on the M button, it creates the history map page. So now we go to that page. So of course some, um, yeah, it has some CSS and JavaScript file here. And also, so the main thing happened in the JavaScript page of, of that history map, which is history map page here. The history map page, um, as you may remember in the, in the architecture picture, mm. um, so we, we try to follow MVC model. So maybe to show that, actually I updated the, uh, that page to put the file in there. Uh, Okay, uh, I put the file. So, can you see the architecture diagram now? Yeah? Yes. Yeah, so we try to follow uh, 
MVC model, model view controller. Yeah. So the controller, uh, as you can detect here, hopefully, uh, is a history map page. Um, so the controller coordinates between the data and the view. The view is whatever you see, and the data is the data that um, the extension collect from the user. So, for example, when you open the new tab, uh, there is some component for, for, da for the data. It will capture the data, and then it will uh, pass to the view to, to display it. Then the controller do the coordination between the, the model and the view. So you can see here um, on line number nine. So I in I create a visualization which is a view. So this code to create a view, and next this is for the model which is similar to the data. So the provenance browser, its role is to capture the data, and when it capture the data, when when it has some new data coming in, it will um, signal the outside, and then it will execute the code in, um, in the on data change here. And maybe you want to explain what SM is? That's um, in the core, isn't it? So it's just uh, like a library, SM. Is that a library? No, no. I mean, isn't it a model? Like this way. Oh. So, uh, yeah, SM is a short kind of sense map. Um, so in SM, you have the visualization, you have the layout, you have different things inside that. But I think actually the, we can we still use the old um, the old name space. So basically, SM. Includes everything, right? SM includes everything. Everything is a top to, level. Yeah, yeah, top level library. It's our our own library. And uh, uh, everything, say like a visualization, is an object or data is an object in SM. Yeah. Yeah. Um. um okay, does that make sense? So, okay, again, this is the visualization, which is the view in the MVC model. This a the model, the model part, which is the, the, the data part, and when when you have new data, we execute the on data change function, and because as I say, the role of the controller is to coordinate between the data and the view. So when you have new data, new data um, is stored in this variable, its action variable, it will somehow update the data. And then call the update which function here, and update which function as the name of the function. It will redraw with the new data. So that is the the basic flow. And I think so far in the minimal version in the rebuild, we have we haven't had a chance to look at the visualization yet because it's much more complicated. So far, I think we look at um, that part. The programs capture, so I and think visualization is that correct? So currently, in the minimal version, it only captures and displays it, but it does not do much with it. If I'm correct, right? Uh, ask, can you ask again? So uh, in the minimal version so mm -hmm. far, um, it only captures and uh, displays it on the history map so far. Is yes. That correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, um, I think. When 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 I create the minimal version, I just try to reduce the data part, and I think uh, the visualization is still not really minimal. Uh, the okay. visualization in okay. the current history map is quite close to the yeah. So you can see in the history map, it has maybe a thousand lines of code. It's not really minimal, um, but but I I I decided to not touch it. Just a little bit at it is because yeah. we, we we don't we not look at it anyway. But I think some of the interactions in the history map is removed. Isn't it? Um, couldn't yeah. remember, but like for example, when you mouse over a node, it displays the menu. Uh, uh, still there, yeah, yeah. It may be still there, but 
Anyway, our focus now is the the program capture part. Because I still need the, the visualization because we need some um, some means of seeing what what we of uh, the data coming in. Yep. So we we still need the visualization to verify that. Mm. Okay. Okay. Now go to the browser capture. And so how do you how do you define? So if we go back to the history map page, and you said say constant browser this size, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so how does it just call the browser problems .js file? How does that link work? Okay. Um. Good question. Um, so you might when, have to open the... When you call this function, um, when you execute this line of code, it's already go to this file. And because you don't need to run anything, it, it, it will it will wrap this JavaScript file, which means that it will run these two lines. Um, how come? How come we just go to this? Ah, uh, because, because the first line. Yeah, yeah, because the, when you execute this one, it will Device load the file. Uh, so when it executes the file, it the uh, executes the uh, other functions too. Is that correct? Yes. When when you run this live code, when you run this live code, it will it executes this uh, this order. Okay. Right. Yeah. Because the whole thing, then the browser provenance is a function, yes. and that's called the uh, sm dot provenance dot. Yeah. And it will yeah. execute the content of this file. Yeah. And it will register. Um, what you will want, what you want to do when a new tab is created, what you want to do when the tab updated. Um, okay, I will not talk about the detail of how we capture the tab and the link because I think it has been changed a lot. Um, but the most important thing is that, um, okay, whatever code you write here to to record change, you need to call this bash dot data change. And the value here. Yeah, maybe go through the the fields in the actions. So what each of those things. Are yeah, for. I think it's displayed here. But you want to explain what ID is um, for what? Oh, what does this dispatch or data change do? Okay. Oh. Uh, what is it asking one? about dispatch? Let me show the. Um. Yeah. So dispatch is something from the three, three library. Is it have to? Okay. So it say, uh. Because it was a, a synchronous type of thing. When you, whenever you have data come in, you want to update the view. Then this is so you can you can dispatch or you can uh, fire or you can create a new event. Yeah, I think first up there's a line which you have to divide this first here. So it did trace dispatch. The, um, the purpose is to dispatch your custom event. So, for example, I can name the event data change, or you can name the event, uh, for example, new tab created or new tab updated. You can have different types of event. Yeah. I think Chrome extension it has own way of sending messages. But here we are using the one provided by D3 library. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. But it does the same thing. Essentially, it just send out a message, say this event happened, and this is the data. It's similar to, to this, for example. It's just like you listen to whatever event comes in, and this one is the the sender. You send the event, and outside here, outside here, you can see here on the name of the event. It executes something additionally to that. So when it's and the, uh, this is the code to handle. Yeah, and you may want to explain the underscore throttle thing. Uh, this this part. But I I may start to ask something. Oh sorry. No 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 it's okay. Um. So. Uh, this underscore is from the low dash library. If from the Lodash library. Um, uh, I'm sure you all understand. Yeah. 
Um, Do you want to open a web browser? Yeah. Uh, I think it's equivalent, uh, not, it's not equivalent, it's um, an analogy of jQuery to normal um, web browser thing. So, uh, Lodash, as a name here, you can see it's a J JavaScript utility library. Uh, for, yeah, for example, instead of write like 10 lines of code, um, there's some shorthand function that you can just call it. Um, maybe just look at some it's example. Just, it's just a variable that you have defined, and then you're using it as an object. We don't define it. We we just use an existing library. Yeah. Yeah. So it just loaded as an external library, just like jQuery. Yeah. yeah. But for example, um, if you want to concatenate two array, so using using standard JavaScript. You don't have, you cannot do it uh, directly. You need to like uh, run the for loop function and then you just push one by one, for example. And then this only they have that utility function. Or for example, if you want to find the difference between two array, like one array has one, two, the other array has only one, the difference of the first one compared to the second one is number two. two. Yeah. yeah. So sort of like a dollar sign for jQuery, I believe, and they have a dash sign. Yeah, yeah. So it's like utility library. But sometimes it takes more time to find a function than to write the code itself. Yeah. So, so um, if you know it, then you just keep using it. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, you don't need to bother. I think the important thing is that if you see something start with the underscore dot something, it's not part of the, so it's part of this particular library, yeah. and you can just check out the library document to find out what it yeah. exactly does. And and actually, many of these functions uh, we don't need to use anymore because in the like when I update the new version of JavaScript, they keep adding new functions to the okay. standard uh, version. Yeah. Um, okay. We can go back to the browser. Oh, yeah, do I you think want to? for example, one function is I think find. Now you. You can find um, an element in an array, but now now they they have the file function in a normal JavaScript, so you don't need to use that function anymore. Um, Is it? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, it's it's, it's uh, just a small technical thing. Okay, and the reason the reason I use I use this, I'm not sure we need to. Um, okay, you can say here. The function I use is throttle. Uh, the basic idea is I think this one is a better example. Uh, in this far, in this line, it says that uh, when the window is resized, for example, you you want to you use a mouse, you resize um, the window of the history map of the history map. Yeah, like this. Then you want to redraw the history map with the new space uh, allow. Yeah. Right. But you don't want to to, to but because the on resize function it will execute like every ten milliseconds and you and you don't want to do the redraw that many times. So you can you, you call this function you say okay I just um, call the update with function every a uh, hundred milliseconds or something like that. Okay, so, so it will help you to um, not overly executed, but you can forget about that if it's overly complicated. The idea is that when data change, basically it will just go to the on data change function. That what you need to know. Yeah, that's it. Forget about other things. Okay. Yeah, I think the idea. I think they can explain is. The throttle from the low dash is just to say don't respond to old events all the time. Just say maybe wait for every hundred milliseconds, which is what they use in example, and process all the events. There. Yeah. Yeah. So you you kind of like um, keep on the event even if it, if it, yeah in a queue and then you you execute it once instead of a hundred times because uh, you don't need that 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 many. Uh, 
uh, respond. Yeah, and I mean, it's most relevant when you do the view, visualization update. Mm -hmm. In terms of data, we don't really get that many events, yeah, so yeah, it should be exactly. okay. In, yeah. in, because like you don't open a hundred tabs in one millisecond, it's not possible to yeah. do that. Um, so it's not really... You know, Maybe possible when we're actually using Sun Chrome to do the testing. You can create lots of... Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, okay. I so I, I, I guess now you, you had an idea of the... Maybe you want to just go through the um, action data uh, yeah, structure yeah. again. We, we those, this few, those yeah. fields explain very quickly. We were there. Yeah. So when you have... Um, Do you want to explain these? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah okay. So when you open a new tab, for example, then um, the code here to it will it will extract some information on the tab, and then it will send it outside. Outside, I mean the controller will listen and then use that information to to draw that on a history map. And the information that that we have here is, for example, the URL of the tab. The text field is either the title, sometimes the web page doesn't have a title, then we can use a URL, or if it doesn't have URL, it's just empty. Um, favorite icon URL is the, the link to the logo of the page. Uh, what is type link? Um, type link is um, the type like how how did you open the tab? It can be a link. If you um, okay. if you click on the link, it could be um, redirection. No, no, it well. could be address, a manual. If you type yeah, in yeah, you address. can type. Okay. I think we, we have it somewhere. We have it somewhere. Oh yeah, further up. But currently we cannot detect detect them, isn't it? So you always assess the link. Um. Yeah. Let's further up at the very beginning of the file. I think you define the types here. Is that what you mean, or a different type? <coughs> um, no, there's no link over here. Type link. Um, No, different. It's a, it's it's a little different. bit different okay. because all of the types here when you type, so all of them map to the, the manual one. Okay. And and the other one is is a link. Or yeah. I couldn't remember, um, but somehow I don't know. In in this code, it's only hard code as a link. Yeah, I think um, uh, when we be able to detect, then yeah, we, I, we I think because because I I remove the code of check whether it's a link or something else. Or, mm. Um, yeah, and when is it a link? We need to know where, where where does it come from, and that is from this field from, and from we store the ID of the parent node. This is an ID. So each node or each action here has an ID, and we if it's a link, we need to store the ID of the parent node. So if that node has a parent, the information of the parent ID is stored in the from field. Yes. Uh, I think uh, for the counter, Shadab, you add the counter, right? Yeah, actually, I added the counter. Is that more or less the same as the ID, from my understanding? So let me explain. Actually, ID is a little bit different. Um, so you can say uh, it's a sort of an event the form, uh, the form variable you can say we are just passing whether if it's a parent ID or if there is no parent ID then the same ID basically passes. So this is the concept, simple as uh, and the ID is basically a form of like a time variable which is we are converting. Like ID is And no? So what is the value of counter, say if we have a counter value say Three. What does that mean? It means that an array or in the array zero one, basically it's the array one zero one two three. That's basically the counter it means. 
it does it mean number of children or is it like what does it how exactly just like a stack you can say like uh, you're maintaining a normal array 0 1 2 3 4 so and it is uh, an array index yeah yeah and then you are later converting it into a form of a tree the form variable actually help us uh, build relationships so that is where basically it comes okay so the counter is the array index where the action is stored in the array that will be used as the index. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense, Amisha and uh, Rida? Yeah, uh, makes yeah. sense. I have a doubt in the add action function. Yeah. Uh, in add action, we are defining id as plus time. What yeah. does that mean? Um. So. ID here is just some unique ID. Yeah. Um, and I guess, I say yes, so I just use the time function to generate a unique ID. Uh, what is plus size? Why do you uh, plus that? is to, to convert it into a number. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Um, okay. So just, just generate so like, unique. Okay. Yeah, you, you, just, you want to generate a unique number and obviously um, because we are done you know open to that that quick so every time when you run that function it we hope that it will generate a, a different um number yeah. you if you are, if you want you can use some you know unique id generators but uh, let's see uh, no i mean i was just creating a, a sequential number generator from zero one to three to manually assign that to the node um, that's what I'm trying to do now, but that's later. That's yeah, an yeah. implementation. Any questions? So, as I said, we're not going to discuss the logic too much here, but yeah, I think that will take quite a long time. Currently, the the current version in the rebuild branch, and uh, the I, logic is mostly coming from Shadab. So. And he changed the code quite a bit already, so different but, from. But I think own. I can explain a little bit because we we going to use that for testing. Yeah. Um. Okay, and before we go on to explain, and I I just want to show you this page. And um, there, I made a wiki. Sorry, a wiki page, and explaining the pseudo code of the browser.js. Uh, so the bottom one is the oldest version and uh, I think the current one is more or less following this structure here and the sub suggested changes. So you have two main functions and update action and add action and these are used on tab, on tab creation so that's listen when a uh, tab creation events happens and it called this message. And when, say, a tab up update event happens, and you sometimes use an update uh, action, sometimes you use add action. So if you click the link in on the page, it will trigger an untab update event. But essentially, we are still creating a new node because it's opening a new URL. And, but if it's just say the page finished the loading, so now we have the actual title and the URL. And in this case, we'll just do an update action. So we'll just updated the title or the URL of that tab. So that's the general structure. Okay, so back to the phone. Oh, we can use this one to explain as well. Um, so because, okay. so you can see here, the only, it will execute these two files. It will do something when a new tab created. It will do something when a tab updated. Um, and we just simply think like um, you can listen to tab created or either tab created or tab updated. You get the information from the tab. Then you know that you know, from the tab, you know the tab URL. So you can check if the URL existed or not. And so then you can update or create a new one. Um, 
I, I don't think I, I will go into detail, but I just want to say again, um, at the end, we need to clone this function so that the outside can, can know that uh, there's something new and it update of this. And I will use that logic to, to test. Uh, okay. And before we move on, can you explain these, the last two lines? Uh, these two. Uh, um, the last line, the last line, because here's a function and you want to return something. Yeah. So you return the module, the module is basically that function. Uh, okay. Do you have to always return something? Yeah, so just, just leave it, these two lines. I, I don't really understand that, the second last line. But this one is to get it from this way. Yeah, it's from this way. So that if you hand this, then the, the event messages will work. Ah, okay. Because you can see dispatch here. I see. So basically, to make the dispatch work, you have to yeah. use these. Okay. And the module here, uh, you can see the module is an object. Yeah. And okay, maybe I can explain this thing is JavaScript. You can say here, uh, I declare this one equal to the function. So basically it's a function, yeah. but it can return something as well. So it's a function and, and uh, it's, it's an object as well. So it's a returns object. Yeah. Okay. And the object is initialized as an empty object. Yeah. So the reason we use that so that we can have, uh, I think this one try to simulate uh, the object oriented thing with the public and private method. So by default, every function here is a private method. So you cannot call it from outside. Okay. If you want to call something from outside, you need to module dot something. The name of the function. Yeah, the name of the function here. And then from outside, you can call this function. By using something. Yeah. and. Apparently, as uh, you say here, we didn't call any function, so that's why you don't have any module thing. So, uh, I have a question if you don't mind. Um, so, if you go back to browser pro provenance, and yes. down there um, it says um, dispatch.data changed. If you scroll up a little, just a slap it on line 115. So dispatch, uh, just again to uh, understand, dispatch would be uh, to uh, send down a message, dot data change would be the um, method, I assume, and ah. action would be uh, the contents, what we did find uh, up there, correct? Yeah. Okay. So the dispatch right. is the object. Um, data change is the name of the event, but it also become a method name as well. Okay. You can see here. So this line basically it creates a dispatch with a data chain method. Okay, I'm just asking to make yeah. sure I understand. So, so you make sure yeah, that, yeah, yeah. for yeah. example, if you want to have, in the future, if we have um, not updated, we want to, to, to clarify between updated and added. Yeah. You can add new things like that, a second parameter to this thing, as a not updated. So you can have node created, node updated. Yeah, and for example, here is a bit action function. Instead of calling this function, I can call node updated. Ah, I see. Yeah, okay. and outside, I can listen to node updated as well. Okay, um, you do whatever thing here. Or call so different function. Function. Yeah, different yeah, function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. So it can respond. That's good. Yeah, so you can distinguish between different types of data change. And the name here is a general, right? Mm. Something change. You don't know. We you can earlier, but we solved it via an array XVDC. Sorry? Can I don't you say it, it again? Too. Can you say it again? Yeah. Yeah, I'm saying if you remember, we had that issue of basically searching and replacing and updating one. This is a very similar concept to that. And um, obviously, we didn't basically use the node updated function, something like that. We basically directly handled via an array. So, 
point? Yeah, I do. I guess what you mean is that this thing is helpful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good. Uh, Thank you. I just want to show you a more complicated file. Maybe I have something uh, uh, come more sure here. Hello, hello. So, are we done with the browser problems? Is there anything more we want to discuss in browser problems? Or? No, uh, not for me at least. Uh, it was pretty clear. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm, I currently open the history map this, which is a view. As you can see in this function, uh, in this page, if you search for module, you can see some some uh, function that can be called outside, which is like public method. For example, you can set the width or the height of the visualization. Okay. And something else. Or um, anything else. Uh, so this allows to be called externally. Yeah. Okay. For example, uh, it can. Like, this is related to everything that we view on the history map, right? Yeah, yeah, but I'm I'm not going to detail. I just want to show you example of uh, a public method. How does it look like? Yeah, basically how to use this module thing from D three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, for example, here, uh, history map. History map is a function and an object. It's a, uh, from from this page, right? Um, this is the SMV history map. So I created that object here, and then I can call some function like label or icon. Mm -hmm. And down here, I can call like the width. I, I want I want to set the width of the visualization, the height of the visualization, something like that. Mm. Um, yeah. uh, can okay. you like repeat that again? What is the label over there? Label is again a function. It's just an example of a function. We don't need to know uh, uh, what does it do now. Uh, but that's okay. It's a single phone try to get the point is for example, um, you define width and height these things uh, in the is it this file yes and the way to define these uh, this is not the, oh yeah this was the part i was confused at what exactly is happening over here yeah so for example here in this file define say module dot width as this okay. function and then later on, you can use this with keyword or as a function in other places like here. So here it is calling the with function from history map and pass the parameter. And then you can define other things as you want. So it defines the width here, it defines the height here, it defines the key. So you can also here say, I say dot uh, key and then pass something, something. Mm -hmm. So that's how you use the module. That yeah. makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Again, so this is a very D three. So if you, we, I know most of you haven't looked into this way yet, but this is D three way of chaining lots of things together in one line. What it likes to do. Um. Yeah. So I think that's pretty much everything for. Browser problem. Okay. Um, so shall we do the testing now? Yeah. Mm. Any other questions before we move on to the testing? Uh, no. Uh, not for mine. Yeah, not for mine. Did you write any test? Um, um, uh, there is a test page, <coughs> current test page, which doesn't do much. Um, okay, so um, I heard. How, um, what are the two JavaScript files inside this uh, MISC folder? MISC? Uh, Sugar.js and widget.js. <laughs> what? Um, MISC mean uh, miscellaneous? 
So it just contain um, it's similar to the Lodash library. So it it's some some things that is useful, and we think that we can re, we can reuse them. Oh, so keep, for keep example, the yeah, for example, in let's just open the sugar. Um, okay. For example, this one get query string. So like uh -huh. uh, you have some function and 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 you can either write it in your code directly, but you if if you think that you can reduce this code somewhere else, so you can just write a new file um, and then it can be shared from uh, for other places. Okay. So it's just some 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 utility functions. Yeah, but why do you need two files? Because one file is for, say, then visual things. Okay. And the other one for widgets, which means that uh, you can see the name here. I want to do some zoom thing. Mm -hmm. uh, zoom in, pan, I can do a row head, a macros, whatever here. So this thing can be reduced, yeah? Okay. Uh, because you can see the file quite big and we never use it. The reason is that it, co it comes from a, like, a big, bigger thing. Uh, so basically, a widget is the utility function for all the visual related things. Mm -hmm. Sugar is the utility function for non-visual. Yeah. Yeah. But many of them are not using it yet. So we maybe reduce a little bit. I don't think he can now. He can only stop. Okay, maybe stop. I think yeah. maybe a good time to stop. Well, well. Uh.